Hey guys! Hey guys! Welcome back. Another week in the madhouse. Yes. This is exactly six days before Thanksgiving. So, you don't want to think about cooking a whole lot of stuff. Uh, you probably got family about ready to come in. Family you like, I hope? In-laws? We know how it is. Tonight, we are going to make for you homemade pizza. Mostly mm. homemade. A few things, of course, your pepperoni, your sauce. If you'd like to make your sauce, go ahead. I am trying to make this a little simple, but you can always doctor it up. <clears throat> um, for the vegetables, we have green and red bell peppers, onions, mushrooms, my favorite, black olives, if we were doing just ham, I would do ham, pineapple, and jalapeno. But, you know, that big fight with pepper or uh, pineapple on a pizza. So. So, we are going to get started with our, with our dough. Make this super duper duper easy. We are going to do, well, once I go back and forth, make the cameraman work. That's okay. Hi. We're going to start, I buy bulk yeast. It's much cheaper, especially if you bake a lot. I like baking my own bread. I'm using one full tablespoon of active dry yeast. Oh, no. If you're using it in the packets, use one full packet for this recipe. We are going to be using a total of three cups of flour. For this, for starting it, you're only going to use one cup, scant, and a pinch. I would say about a teaspoon or so of sugar. That will help activate your yeast. Mm, that's hungry. Uh-huh. Now, of course, I use... Try to keep it dry in a wet measuring cup when you're baking. Uh, you want, okay, one cup of hot water to go in with this as well. And we are going to whisk this. This is going to make, for my baker friends out there, just a very, very loose sponge. You're going to set this on your counter. It'll do two purposes. Let your yeast get active and make sure that your yeast is active. Um, a lot of people that don't bake a lot, they buy yeast. Hey, got to have it and keep it for four years. Yeast is a living organism. You really need to use it or freeze it like I do. When we get back, we'll get the dough together. Any surprises today? Yeah, one surprise. We're doing pizza two different ways. I personally like deep dish him uh, he, he's got to have it thin uh, so this isn't a requirement but if you have one now is a good time to get your oven heated up to its highest setting that's about 500 degrees throw your pizza stone in there and keep warming it up we'll be right back on in the kitchen with me mikey and my cameraman roy happy uh, holidays guys we'll be hey, right back go go kitchen this smells really good this is your sponge like i said for my bakers this is set for about 10 minutes and you can tell it's quite active with the hot water you don't add your salt don't add it too soon you'll kill your yeast now to this we are going to start with about a cup of flour Honestly, depending on your humidity, this is going to change how much you use, but a good base for it is two to three cups. Uh, Shut up. I don't want to hear it. Fault. I don't want to hear it. it. You know, you would think with six outlets, you'd remember to plug things in that you need. I'm sorry. It was my fault. It's all his fault. Always. Trying to get a good assistant. Now, speaking of assistance, Roy, yes. how do you know when your dough is at the right consistency? Because it pulls away from the 
Keep going. Pulls, it pulls back from the uh, sides. See, at least somebody listens to me. And it's a whole lot easier to add extra flour than it is to add extra water. Although it can be done, you just have to do it in small increments. You want your dough to knead for about five minutes. It doesn't need to go as long as your, uh, like a bread dough. And I'm thinking, you know, I might actually need just a little, oh, I know why I need water. Did that look on your face? Yeah. You're supposed to add <laughs> your other cup of water, which I didn't. That's one half cup and thank goodness there was some flour in it. So let me go over that so I don't confuse anybody. It's starting with one cup of flour, one tablespoon of yeast, one cup of hot water, one tablespoon of sugar. Let that come together. Uh, you can just use a whisk. Uh, wait about 10 minutes to make sure that your yeast is active. Then you add another cup of hot water and two more cups of flour. That's where I messed up. I forgot the water. So how hot water do you put? You know, if you've got scalding hot water coming out of your tap, that if you can hold your finger under it for 10 seconds, it's perfect. If you burn before 10 seconds is up, you'll kill your yeast. So, we are going to let this come together and knead for the next 10 minutes. We'll be right back when it's ready. Come together. Bye now. Okay, this is about midway through mixing. You can see it's pulling away nicely from the side of the bowl. Just continue to knead this for about five minutes. Okay, I gotta say this while Roy's doing his thing. This reminds me of the rat song, Round and Round. Hey look guys, this is something you don't ever see. Roy actually doing something. I gotta watch so no fly and beat me. Oh, come on, let her rip. Let her rip, come on, go, you go, 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 go. I want to see it just fly up there and get you. Our dough's ready. Look at that. It will have just a little bit of stickiness to it, which is fine. We are going to solve that problem here in about two seconds. No dough. Just... A little bit of oil, and I do mean just a little bit, about a tablespoon. You want enough to pull it off the sides, ball it up one time, and I'm about to use one of my favorite lines. Again, just all in all, maybe a tablespoon on here. Uh, you'll know how much it needs. It just needs to cover the dough. This will be enough, actually, for two pizzas and probably, if Roy's nice, either some cinnamon sticks or a couple of pepperoni rolls. Mm. Just set this to the side. Next to your oven, which should be preheating. Mine is preheating up to 500 degrees. Trust me on that because we're burning up in here. Give us a few minutes. Let this rise. It'll take about 45 minutes unless you're in a very hot kitchen like this. It'll be about 30. We'll show you how to uh, roll it out, pat it out, or in my case, I'm making mine deep. We'll be right back. And hey. Hey. Stop. Stop. There's two little buttons down below. There and there. Please hit them. It's the holiday season. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. And if you really do like what we're doing, hit the ding little bell. And that will notify you every time that we release a new video. We'll be right back on In the Kitchen with me. Yeah, you already know the rest. Yeah. I want to get a little bell. Mikey. Hey, guys. We are back. Yeah. As you can see, our dough has risen, doubled in size, and it only took about 25 minutes. So, 
first thing you want to do, if you are going to want to do a hand tossed or a thinner crust pizza, which is what we're gonna do, um, I am going to turn my oven back on again. The um, old pizza stone has been in here for about an hour, give or take. You want your oven at 450 degrees. If you don't have a pizza stone, use whatever pan you prefer. Uh, you have round pizza pans, you have the long baking sheets, make a square pizza. It's up to you. It's your, it's your pizza, make it how you want it. Yeah. Uh, the biggest part of this, of course, is gonna be your dough. This is just plain cornmeal, yellow cornmeal. Um, there's a reason for this. So it doesn't stick on your counter. This is how the pros do it. Now, as far as your dough, how much you are going to need is very much going to depend on the size of your pan. I'm going to pinch off. He's going to pinch a loaf. You knew it was coming. You knew it was coming. Now hiring new cameraman, Charleston location. Hey. I'm pinching off about <laughs> five... That is about seven ounces. Dust both sides. I'm gonna show going to show you. I see I'm still saying gonna so much. I'm gonna show you how to make a good crust. Look at you. Just push your fingers in there all around the edge, and that is going to give you your first part of the crust. Then just work your way in to the center. Gosh, we should have some uh, Italian music playing. Uh, da, 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 da. It's probably copywritten, so we can't. Oh, God. Oh. If you're good, this is where you can toss it. Can you toss it? I'm not that good. You're not a tosser, are you? Now, honestly, for the best, if you could throw this dough in your refrigerator and wait 24 hours... That would be the best way to use it. Unfortunately, you know, we're not waiting 24 hours. Mm. Um, this is a good dough. This is honestly my all-purpose recipe to use for almost everything and a good starter. You want to make sure that you have some depth in the center of your pizza. Or when you cut it, um, it's going to be really flimsy in one area, especially with a thinner crust and you're not going to do a double rise on here. Uh, you can dock this down if you want, and I think that would be, a, honestly, a good idea. We have, that's about a 12 inch, yeah, that's about a 12 inch crust, maybe a little shy of that. If you have a docker, dock it. If not, just use the fork like I'm doing. This is going to keep giant bubbles from forming in the middle of your pizza. Once you are ready for that, we are going to pull out our pizza stone. And please, 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 if you're using one, pull it out with hot mitts, because this thing will be hotter than eggs. Oh. Dust it again so it doesn't stick with just a slight amount of your cornmeal. Toss your crust on. See, I got a little thin in a couple of spots. Uh, we are going to use a store-bought pizza sauce. If you want to make it or you have your own sauce, use an Alfredo sauce, a barbecue sauce if you'd like to do a uh, barbecue pizza. Uh, I've even seen a lot of places do uh, a good uh, old ranch pizza. There we go. Roy doesn't like a lot of sauce, so we're not going to use a lot of sauce on this one. We'll be right back, show you the toppings, and show you the deep dish. Cheesy is good. Cheese is good. Now, like me, I'm pretty pretty heavy with uh, toppings. Watch when it comes to your cheese. When it melts and rises up, everything's going to come to the center. 
So you want to make sure you get a good edge, but you still want a good crust. I like crust. Some people don't. Yeah, I can take it or leave it. Dip it in garlic sauce, garlic butter, ranch, hot sauce, whatever makes you happy. Feed it to the birds. Feed it to the birds. Now, I do have some sausage. If you like sausage, make sure you are going to uh, pre-cook that before you use it. Oven's ready. Mm, you know what that means, don't you? It's about to go in. Yes. Oh, oh Christmassy. I was getting ready to say it reminds me of holiday. <laughs> mm, we got to watch. Oh. I don't want Madonna knocking at my oh, door. Oh, God, no. She broke my tail. I'd cry. I love you. <laughs> Speaking of, what do you think of her new video? Uh, yeah. Yeah, not a fan of I either. like older Madonna. Yeah. I mean, not older, I mean, age-wise, but <laughs> I love her first album. She's, what, 90 now? She is not 90. You better watch you come knocking on your door. <laughs> love you, Madonna. Uh, no, he doesn't mean it. Miss Ciccone. Mm. Look at that, would you? So that is ham, pepperoni, onions, green and red peppers. To top it, throw just a little bit more cheese on it. You won't see as much of the oil released from your, uh, oh, what am I trying to say? From the pepperoni. Open your oven, 450 degrees. We did lower it slightly. This is going to go in for 10 to 12 minutes. As you see right up here, I've got an iron skillet smoking hot. I'm going to turn it off. This one is going to go much, much quicker. Just two tablespoons of butter. Throw it in. Look at that. <laughs> now me, I like a little bit of seasoning with mine. So... I don't use a whole lot of uh, powdered garlic, but on this one I'm going to, just to season your crust up slightly. This will also help with the rise. Move that around so we don't burn it. Garlic does burn relatively easy, and it gets very bitter. So, as I said, we had enough. Eh, about three ounces left over. This will go in. We don't need the uh, cornmeal for this one. I'll just get it all ready for you. You can. I'll show you. Just push it out to about the size of your pan. A better way of doing this, and had I thought about it a little sooner, I would have done it. You go ahead and place it in your pan and let it actually rise in the pan. You get a much, much, much better crust. Plus, since we're hungry, <laughs> we're not real good on waiting. Oh, no. And if you've got a house full of kids that are hungry, I'm sure it's going to be the same. Now, the pan's cooled slightly where you won't get the sizzle. Just push it around to your edges, making sure not to burn yourself. This is still going to rise some. And, of course, sauce. Oh, you can hear that sizzle. You're going to get a good crisp crust. Those of us who like deep dish know all about it. Now, there is another deep dish that we will eventually do. That one is Chicago style. Completely different. You do use raw ingredients on that one because the pizza cooks for about 45 minutes at a lower temperature. And as weird as it is, you know, you gotta love, love Chicagoans. Their uh, sauce goes on top. All the toppings go on the bottom. Then the sauce and cheese, or no, I'm sorry. Cheese on the very bottom. Sausage usually, pepperoni. And then uh, your sauce on top. I think that's kind of weird myself. But, you know, whatever floats your boat. Pizza. I want to say the all-American dish, but it's not. 
the Italians brought something uh, something from home. We've just adapted it. Ada <laughs> definitely adapted it. We do a lot of stuff like that. I don't think a true Italian would want um, something like the jalapenos or the pineapple on it that I enjoy. Or this ingredient that's coming your way now. Oh, I'm not a fan. Love black olives. Oh, enjoy them. For some reason, Roy thinks they have the texture of a water bug. They just look like a water I, bug. I was going to say, I don't want to ask him how many water bugs he's eaten. Never. Because, you know, I haven't. <laughs> I'm not big with the sauce on top, but I do like a slight sprinkle of Parmesan. My daddy used to say Parmesan. <laughs> well, guys, that's pretty much it, except for baking it. Once it's done, we'll show you. Roy will do his magic, make it beautiful. Then we'll have to sit down and eat. One more time, tis the season to like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Don't forget, and if you'd really like to see us every week, make sure you hit the uh, bell for the notifications when we release new videos. Ding. Which is pretty much every Saturday. Pretty much. Thank you guys for watching. We'll be back. Who <laughs> says you can't have pizzeria pizza at all? I'll tell you what. Now, guys, I'm telling you, this beats any box or any pizzeria. For one, you know, the ingredients are fresh. You know who hands, whose hands have been on it. And make this a project with the kids. Of course, not the baking part. Sit, it, sit them at the table around. Make it a family night. Put what toppings they like on it. Um, as simple as it is, hey, it's easy pizza. Your dough is going to be the longest time, but that dough recipe you can use so many different ways. It's pretty much my go-to recipe that I use on all the ones that we've done. Um, the pizza rolls, um, off the top of my head, I can't think of all the bread stuff that we've done, but hey, you watched them, you know what they are. Um, <clears throat> with a little bit of leftover dough that I had, I went ahead and made, uh, Roy's lunch tomorrow, uh, stromboli, um, just fold the leftover dough, there you go, my deep dish, look at this, I'm not going to cut it right away, but look at the bottom, That's pretty. that is going to be a good crisp, if you want, you can put cheese on top, do what you want, what I'm telling you isn't set in stone, well, except pizza stone. for the pizza stone, <laughs> What I'm telling you uh, on the on all of the cooking, all the videos that I do, I'm not doing this to tell you how to do something. I'm showing you maybe different ways and really how easy cooking can be. And it all depends on what you like. Be adventurous. Um, if you like those little fishies. Be nice. Put them on there. I don't like the little fishies. I leave them off. Guys, thank you. It's been wonderful. There's only one thing left for us to do. Mm. You know what that is. Let's eat. <laughs> Thank you guys for stopping by my kitchen. Happy Thanksgiving.